Welcome back. My guest is Augie. Uh, Augie, I've, I've read reports which says that we had Arctic temperatures that were warm in the 30s. I've read about the medieval warm period from 900 to 1200 AD. I've read about the little ice age that we've had, and yet we're majorly concerned right now that something's going on in the climate. What, why the sudden focus on now, and yet we don't look at what's happened in history? Beach me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you'd like a better answer than that, but uh, I don't know. It, it just seems to be a, a desire to sweep that information, that historical evidence under the rug and not pay any attention upon it. Again, looking upon the fear factor, the, the guilt factor. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the main thrusts of the uh, Gore movie is this hockey stick. Uh, a profile, right. and and uh, you hear a lot mentioned where it gets its name. Of course, is for about uh, a thousand years or so, we we see the temperature of the Earth supposedly rather constant, and then in the last 50 years, we get a sudden upsurge, right. and it looks very much like an ice hockey. I should point yeah. out, yeah. since it was a couple of Canucks that yeah. came up with that. Uh, so it's a it's, it looks like a hockey stick profile. Well, on July 14th of this year, that was completely. Uh, thrown out, undermined by, by the leading statistical minds in the U.S. The U.S. Congress wanted to do an investigation on this, and they said that the data was manipulated. Mm -hmm. Was manipulated. You could take random gen generated mm -hmm. numbers mm -hmm. and get that same kind of profile yeah. using their techniques. So they chucked in bogus numbers, and they still came out with the same it's, result. Exactly. My, exactly. My understanding also is that they also, uh, the U.N. has conveniently chopped the top of the hockey stick off. Yeah on the medieval warm period that we yeah, went through. That's right. Well, they have. They so, so I guess we come back to the original question, Augie. What is ultimately driving this? I, I, don't have, I don't have an answer. I do know this, that historically, you can go back to 1895, there was articles in, in uh, the media, newspaper, printed media at that time, on uh, global warming. And then we went through a period of the teens, flapper 20s and so forth, where cooling was the, you know, uh, mm. global cooling mm. was the thing. And again, about the 30s through the mid-1950s, global warming. Then in the 70s, we had this, we're all going to freeze to death. Statements in, you know, New York Times, global cooling is inevitable, mm. just like we hear today. And now here we are, starting 1981 and continuing. So historically, we've seen these cycles as well. Yeah. Uh, why do they persist? Why do they continue? I found that they have waned in periods of um, uh, global uh, distress, like World War One and Two, mm -hmm. you, you, you read no articles about global warming, global cooling at all. More important things. To More think important about. things. And here we are today. We seem to be cruising along rather happily. In defence of people who support global warming and, and greenhouse emission. There is a problem in, you, in the world that as we become more industrialised, there's more filth being spewed into the air. Uh, I mean, that's got to be a given, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But you're confusing now. I suppose when you say filth, do you mean pollution? Smog. Smog, okay. Mm. Smog. Power emissions, factories, yeah. that's got to be bad for the environment. For the environment, but that's different from the greenhouse issue. Mm. Those aren't greenhouse gases. See, TO2 is called a pollutant by many global warming uh, you know, alarmists. It isn't a pollutant. It's a fertilizer, if you really want to know it. It's what keeps plants green. Mm. Uh, oftentimes, greenhouse operators pump CO2 into their greenhouse to accelerate and strengthen the growth of plants, tomatoes, lettuce, whatever you want, you know. Uh, so uh, it's not a pollutant. That's not to say that, you know, I'm in favor of dirty air. No, I want it clean too. I don't want to suck in a lot of particles and aerosols and, you know, God knows what else. But that's a different issue. But that's a different right. issue. That's a different issue. Can I quote out of a report from the American Policy Center? And they said this, Global warming has become a religion that the faithful have vowed to follow no matter what the true facts may Absolutely. show. Global warming is nothing more than a euphemism for redistribu redistribution of wealth from the rich development nations to jealous dictatorship. You know, it's almost become a religion in the environmental movement. That's right. What do they really want? You know, I mean, have to ask yourself. We have never gone back, and a very wise young lady told me this, we, mm. we have never gone back, who was my wife, by the way, mm. we have never gone backwards in technology. We don't use typewriters and carbon paper anymore. Mm. You know, are we going to go backwards in technology now because someone says, you know, the, the planet's on danger? Mm when in reality I tell you to you it isn't mm. you know CO2 is not the problem maybe mm. it's the Sun mm. maybe you know we, we get a strong influence on our on our weather uh, on a daily basis on a seasonal basis we're coming into summer now we're expecting seven percent more radiation from the Sun than we get here in the winter time mm. 
and we call it summer winter. Mm. You know, a solar physicist would call it something else, mm. but that's the pain. Could be the sun's changing. You know, we could be seeing more sunspots, oh, less yeah. sunspots. Why blame CO2? Because it looks kind of handy and it played right into the Trump hand of the environmentalist. What if it turns out to be not CO2 and the sun? Then what are we going to do? Well, can we just look at that just finally, the, the spiritual side of things? Because there's two issues here. The first thing is, did God make a mistake? Has God got it wrong? To, to be an eco-fundamentalist, do you have to deny that God's actually in control of this universe? Well, I, I don't know. I've, I have great faith in believing that that's part of the driver too. The greenhouse effect didn't just come about. Mm. It didn't just come about and, and isn't that sort of uh, nice. And, and uh, uh, no, I don't think God made a mistake at all. Uh, uh, I like to tell people because water vapor so dominates the greenhouse process, we couldn't change the climate if we wanted to. Mm. Now, think about that. I think that's the answer to your question. We couldn't change the climate if we wanted to. And do we want to? I find great satisfaction in knowing that it's run the way it's run and that if we're all worried about what happens in China over the next 20 years or India, it doesn't matter. The planet's in pretty good, safe hands. Okay, but that leads on to the last question, and that is that many Christians have bought into global warming because they feel that uh, as stewards of the earth from God, That's they right. need to take responsibility. We need to look after the earth. So therefore, is it right to buy into the global warming? Can you look after the earth without believing the theory of global warming? Look, you can, you can because I like the approach of stewardship. It comes back to, if you want to be a stewardship with regards to keeping the water clean, keeping the air clean, you have our blessings. That's where you should be. Mm -hmm. When it comes to controlling major physical processes that sustain life on this planet, like the greenhouse effect, you don't have to worry about it. It's in pretty safe hands. But isn't the Kyoto Protocol about stopping dirty water, dirty air? I don't know. To be honest with you, I don't know. I think it's more related to cutting back on emissions. I don't see Kyoto mentioned in the context of air quality and air pollution. It's all mentioned in terms of greenhouse gas control. Has, has global warming become more of a dollar issue than an environmental issue? Yeah, I think it has. Just finally, what, what's your advice to us? What, what should we do in a practical way to look after the environment but not perhaps, as you say, buy into this theory? Well, I think try to become informed. Ask yourself in your quiet moments, do I see evidence of all the claims that people are making? Do, do I see a possible alternative motive behind these claims? Uh, you know, most of the people who are making these claims as what will happen in 50 or 75 years, they're not going to be accountable for those. Mm. You know, they're going to be called to their reward. Uh, I have but one wish, I tell my friends, you know, I want to live long enough to prove the so-and-so's wrong, <laughs> you know? and and and. And I think we will. I, good science is sustainable. Mm. And this isn't good science. And we will begin to see a deterioration in some, like the hockey stick that we saw before. Mm. Al Gore's movie suggests that 2005 was a horrendous hurricane season in the U.S. Mm. We had Katrina and we got more of them coming. You know, the old uh, man bites dog story. Yep. Yeah, have you heard anything about the 2006 hurricane season which ends tomorrow. It's been quiet hasn't it? Yeah quiet. You want to know how quiet? It's below average. Below average. Mm. Is Al Gore going to get up and say I'm sorry I made a mistake about 2006. It wasn't so bad. No it's a dog uh, yeah it's a dog bites man mm. story. Yeah. The media is not going to pick it up and it's finished. So you have to dig, you have to look and you have to think about this mm. and don't accept everything you're told. Uh, I find that most people have doubts about global warming and skeptics are not in the minority. The division right now is about 58% of scientists think that global warming will hurt us, and then there's a corresponding, there's about 15% don't know, yeah. and then there's about 30% or whatever the balance is that suggests mm. that it's not a problem. Mm. So it's not as lopsided as everybody mm. thinks. Well, we hope this program has encouraged people well, to do I a bit more it does research. Too. <laughs> Augie, thank you for your time. My pleasure, thanks very much.